that is powered in part by fusion energy. The Fukushima disaster reminded us all of the dangers of uranium-fueled nuclear reactors. The nuclear power plant, which was severely damaged by the earthquake on March 11, 2011, is home to a total of six reactors, all of which went operational in the 1970s. The subsequent struggle to contain the fuel rods and keep them cool brought to light just how energetic uranium fission reactions are and how difficult it is to maintain control over them. Of course, that level of energy is precisely why we use nuclear energy. It is an incredibly efficient source of power, produces very few emissions, and has an excellent safety record to boot. On the other hand, when people talk about how nuclear power is beneficial but uranium is risky, they frequently bring up an excellent point. What about thorium? A nuclear reactor powered by thorium rather than uranium would provide enough energy for thousands of years, but it's nowhere to be found today. The question then becomes what went wrong? And given that scientists are now theorizing that it is possible, is thorium on the verge of making a comeback? Come along with us in today's video to get the lowdown on what's going on with nuclear reactors that run on thorium. Nuclear energy is a type of energy released by the nucleus, the core of an atom composed of protons and neutrons. This type of energy can be generated in two ways. Fission, when atom nuclei split into several parts, or fusion, when nuclei fuse together. Current nuclear power plants use fission to produce electricity, while research and development into fusion power plants continues in the background. So what exactly is nuclear fission? Nuclear fission is a reaction in which an atom's nucleus splits into two or more smaller nuclei while spewing energy. When hit by a neutron, the nucleus of an atom of uranium-235, for example, splits into two smaller nuclei, such as barium nucleus and krypton nucleus, as well as two or three neutrons. These extra neutrons will collide with other nearby uranium-235 atoms, splitting and producing additional neutrons in a multiplying effect, resulting in a chain reaction in a fraction of a second. Every time the reaction occurs, energy is released in the form of heat and radiation. In a nuclear power plant, the heat can be converted into electricity in the same way that heat from fossil fuels such as coal, gas and oil is used to generate electricity. Uranium is a metal that occurs naturally in rocks all over the world. Uranium contains a number of naturally occurring isotopes which are forms of an element that differ in mass and physical properties but share chemical properties. Uranium is made up of two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235. Uranium-238 makes up the majority of the world's uranium, but cannot produce a fission chain reaction. Whereas uranium-235 can produce energy through fission, but accounts for less than 1% of the world's uranium. To make natural uranium more likely to fission, the amount of uranium-235 in a given example must be increased through a process known as uranium enrichment. Once enriched, uranium can be used effectively as nuclear fuel in power plants for three to five years before it becomes radioactive and must be disposed of according to strict guidelines to protect people and the environment. This begs the question of why thorium, which can last for thousands of years, is not used to fuel nuclear power plants instead of uranium. Why are governments not working on creating nuclear power plants based on thorium? The short answer is precedent. It is certainly possible to build nuclear reactors using thorium rather than the most commonly used element, uranium. And because thorium-based fuel is more stable than uranium-based fuel, thorium reactors are likely to be relatively safer, with the added benefit of not producing as much nuclear bomb fuel. Of course, they are not without flaws. Even if a conventional meltdown is unlikely, thorium still emits dangerous radiation that must be contained, and something could always go wrong. However, the real reason countries prefer uranium over thorium is due to wartime politics. Governments supported uranium-based reactors during the Cold War because they produced plutonium, which was useful in the production of nuclear weapons. However, let us now go over thorium in greater detail. Thorium, like iron and uranium, is a basic element in nature. Its properties, like uranium's, allow it to be used to fuel a nuclear chain reaction that can power a power plant and generate electricity, among other things. Thorium will not split and release energy on its own. 
When exposed to neutrons, it will undergo a series of nuclear reactions, eventually transforming into U-233, a uranium isotope that will readily split and release energy the next time it absorbs a neutron. Thorium is thus referred to as fertile, whereas U-233 is referred to as fissile. Thorium-uranium (ThU) fuel cycles are used in reactors that use thorium. However, the vast majority of existing or proposed nuclear reactors use enriched uranium U-235 or reprocessed plutonium PU-239 as fuel in the uranium-plutonium cycle, with only a few using thorium. Theoretically, both current and exotic designs can accommodate thorium. Today's commercial nuclear reactors could switch to thorium-based fuels with some modifications, but at a high cost. Thorium nuclear power, on the other hand, may be the answer for some countries. India and China are investing heavily in its development. Both of these upcoming nuclear reactor powerhouses have significant reserves of thorium-bearing minerals, but not as much uranium. So, in the not-too-distant future, expect this energy source to become a big deal. China isn't the only country looking to thorium as a potential source of energy. Exploration of this uranium substitute is gaining popularity around the world. A new generation of scientists and nuclear engineers believe that thorium could be the key to realizing the dream of safe, cheap and abundant nuclear power for a world in need of energy. Thorium deposits, which are estimated to be four times more abundant than uranium, are widespread. Significant reserves have been discovered in China, Australia, the United States, Turkey, India and Norway. The use of approximately 6,600 metric tons of thorium to power the most efficient proposed reactors would provide enough energy to replace all of the fossil fuels and nuclear energy consumed globally each year. India, which lacks uranium, is conducting long-term research and has decided that thorium will be the mainstay of its nuclear energy industry later this century. Nuclear energy, on the other hand, carries a dreadful stigma. Following disasters such as Chernobyl, Three Mile Island and Fukushima, the public is acutely aware of nuclear energy's potential, albeit misguided, dangers. The cost of nuclear power generation is rising, in stark contrast to the falling costs of alternative energy sources such as solar and wind, which have recently gained enormous popularity. This trend may continue until market forces render nuclear power obsolete. In this dynamic, there is a resurgence of nuclear technology, liquid fluoride thorium reactors or lifters. A lifter is a type of molten salt reactor that is far safer than a conventional nuclear reactor. Lifters use a combination of thorium and fluoride salts to power a reactor. A typical configuration for a modern thorium-based reactor is similar to a conventional reactor, but with significant differences. First, fluoride salts in the reactor core are enriched with thorium-232 and uranium-233. Heat and neutrons are released from the core during fission and absorbed by the surrounding salt. As the thorium-232 absorbs an additional neutron, a uranium-233 isotope is formed. The salt melts into a molten state which heats an inert gas such as helium and drives a turbine to generate electricity. The radiated salt is pumped into a post-processing plant where the uranium is separated from the salt. The uranium is then returned to the core where the fission process is restarted. Thorium reactors generate far less radioactive waste and can reuse separated uranium, making the reactor self-sufficient once operational. Unlike traditional high-pressure nuclear systems, lifters are designed to operate as a low-pressure system, creating a safer work environment for workers who operate and maintain these systems. Furthermore, because fluoride salts have very high boiling points, even a large increase in heat will not result in a massive increase in pressure. Both of these factors significantly reduce the possibility of a containment explosion. Because lifters do not require extensive cooling, they can be placed anywhere and are air-cooled. If the core fails, gravity will allow heated, radiated salt to spill into passive via underground failsafe containment chambers, which will be capped by an ice plug that melts on contact. Lifters have numerous advantages. Any remaining radioactive waste cannot be used to make weapons. The cost of fuel is significantly lower than that of a solid fuel reactor. The salts are about $150 a kilogram and thorium is about $30 a kilogram. If thorium becomes popular, the cost will fall because thorium is widely available throughout the Earth's crust. 
Thorium is found in concentrations more than 500 times that of fissile uranium-235. Thorium was previously discarded as a byproduct of rare earth metal mining. Extraction could yield enough thorium to power lifters for thousands of years. The material cost for fuel for a 1 gigawatt facility would be around $5 million. Because lifters use thorium in its natural state, no expensive fuel enrichment process or solid fuel rod fabrication are required, resulting in significantly lower fuel costs than a comparable solid fuel reactor. Unlike a conventional reactor, post-chemical reprocessing would allow a lifter to efficiently consume nearly all of its fuel, leaving little waste or byproduct. Finally, a thorium plant will operate at approximately 45% thermal efficiency, with future turbine cycles potentially increasing overall efficiency to 50% or higher, implying that a thorium plant can be up to 20% more efficient than a traditional light water reactor. However, there are a few obstacles to overcome when using lifters. There are significant gaps in research and materials required for lifters. The post-processing chemical facilities that would separate uranium from the molten salts for reuse have yet to be built. Each reactor would require highly enriched uranium to start, which would be very expensive. Scientists believe that a $5 billion investment over the next five years could result in a viable reactor solution in the United States, but with limited funding for thorium, this vision is unlikely to come true. Should countries around the world begin to invest more in thorium? Tell us in the comments section below.